So, I've been making fat videos for quite a long time now, and a lot of really nice people have told me that they really enjoy watching them. But here's my little secret. I don't have the technical skill to edit for shit. So today I thought I would share my method for making enjoyable fag movies or any type of musical montage, I suppose. I think there's a lot of what I'm about to say is pretty widely applicable to movie making. But anyway, without further ado, how to make good frag videos without using any fancy editing whatsoever. Step one, get footage. How to probably get good footage from TF2 is not really what I want to focus on in this video, so I'll just give you the short version. I use Lavina recording tool to relaunch TF2 and I use the casting sensor plugins to make STV clips appear as if they're POV clips. I record TDJ files into a folder and then use this janky ass beta version of the AVI recorder to compile this into an AVR file into another folder, I rename them and then I move them into a third folder and BAM! Footage easy. Step 2. Organize your footage. Import your footage into any editing software. I use Sony Vegas, but literally anyone will do. Even Windows Movie Maker will probably get, be enough to get the job done. Uh, then trim all your clips to be roughly the length you want them to be. This should give you an idea of just how much footage you have and how long the final video will be. I always record a bit more footage than I need to, so I can make cuts that, as I deem necessary. Usually my videos will be about like two thirds to half as long as the length of the raw footage. Sometimes I'll organize my clips into different groupings as well, such as uh, clips I'll definitely use, clips I might use and clips I'll only use if I really need to. Um, you can do whatever you want to do and whatever you feel like gives you the best idea what to do with it. You can just organize this into like uh, big air shots or kill streaks or really anything you want. Just as long as it gives you an idea how long the footage is going to, the final video will be, it's going to be good. Step three, find the right music. Once you know roughly how long your video is going to be, it's time to find the right music for the job. Honestly, this is probably the most important thing to get right about a montage, since nobody wants to sit through five minutes of terrible music, regardless of how just like absolutely amazingly compelling the footage might be. So uh, using music on YouTube can also be a bit of a minefield these days. However, there are several places where you can find music that will not get claimed or end up having your video muted. And in fact, YouTube even has its own music library where you can find large amounts of licensed free music. Uh, most of the music there is terrible, but if you look uh, long enough, you can probably find some hidden gems. Or you can use whatever music you like. And just deal with the fact that you don't have enough subscribers for money to ever be a proper factor to consider and just hope the owners of music, like don't mute your music, they just take the ad revenue and don't mute the video, you know? <laughs> There's no perfect song for making montages. But here are some things that I look for in a song. So it should be energetic, it should be a, like a relatively high BPM, it should have heavy drums, it should have lots of small build-ups and these nice powerful hits. So long build-ups can work as well, but it's generally more difficult to keep things flowing over the course of a long build-up than it is to make work for a short one. So one of the best things to listen for in a song are risers, and uh, I've never started music theory by the way, so I'm probably describing all this wrong, so bear with me, but basically risers are these static noises that uh, gradually rise in volume and pitch, and they build up this sort of crescendo or like this major hit of a beat. Sometimes there's this small like break after the riser stop and then like it, it will hit and it's really nice. But uh, like you'll hear these like swooping sounds in the background, like right here, like Right, like that's a riser and there's some of the easy things to use when syncing up your footage with music. Step four, place markers on the song. Listen through your song and place markers to identify the big obvious places where you can sync things up with the song. Mostly it will be places with risers and pauses leading to the big hits, but you can also make uh, markers at like the beginning of an, an end of like a quiet section as well as other things that stand out in song. Anything that makes a change is good. Um, I like to put big air shots at the, like in the big build up spot. So once all the markers have been placed, I'll grab like the best clips of air shot that I have, and then I'll insert these into the spots and then I'll just fill in the areas around them later. So don't worry about that. Just like put all the big shots that you really want to highlight at these big, like build up spots first. That's the first step. And uh, this ensures that I don't have some big build up 
which doesn't resolve into this uh, satisfying clip. Like nothing is worse than a big buildup with no payoff. Step five, maintaining flow. Most song will have a bit of variety in it. There will be like the slow section, there'll be fast sections and a few things in between. And generally speaking, you want to fill the fast moving parts with short energetic clips and slower parts with longer, more drawn out clips. That's just like a general rule of thumb. As far as TF2 clips are concerned, a general rule of thumb is that Scout, Sniper and Meta clips are slow, while Demo Man and Solar clips are fast. So kill streaks generally go in the slow parts, while air shots belong in the fast section. But of course, if you have a fast kill streak, that can go in a very energetic part. And if you have like some slow build up into a big air shot, then that can go in a slow part as well. Yeah, there's no like really solid rules. It's just only rules of thumbs and whatever you feel like fits in. Uh, the faster the music, the shorter the clip should be. If you don't have a short clip to use, you can even uh, you can begin cutting like dead time out of individual clips to increase the pace. It's also a good idea to keep some variety in all sections of the video, so try not to use like every similar clip at the same time. If you're in a fast section and you have like a bunch of sort of clips, try to somehow sneak in a bunch of like scout or sniper or whatever clips in there, just uh, so things don't get too repetitive. You know, common sense stuff. Step six, how to sync. One of the best ways to make a video flow well is to sync up your footage with the music. So the markers that we put down are going to come in really handy right here. So I like to sync up the big moments to, to air shots to connect the major beats of the song, right? So well, when like there's this big build up and then like there will be this riser and then maybe even a short break and then like, bam, it hits. That's where I like to put my air shots. Uh, you can do it otherwise, but like that's just a really obvious way of doing things. And, and that's what I like to do. And I do it all the time and it works really well. So like we've already placed them if you kind of followed along <laughs> early on, right? So that works out. Um, however, I, I do want to make it clear that you can sim sync up absolutely whatever you want to the music, all right? Uh, and it'll probably come out looking great. Like, it doesn't matter if it's an air shot, it's like a shotgun shot, a rocket jump, a cut between two clips, a gun reloading, or like literally anything you can think of. Anything can work. Uh, the, the human brain is just super good at recognizing patterns and making connections between things. So people will just automatically assume that the music and the actions on the screen are connected. And even if you didn't intentionally meant to do it, or if you did and just executed it sloppily, people will still make the connection. So just don't stress out about it making the sync perfect, it will work. So a nice way to make a sync hit harder is to fade out the sound right before the beat hits and then bring it back in full at full volume once it does. Uh, you can also do stuff like uh, slow down the footage, speed it up and then go back down to slow motion as the hit comes. And uh, so it's just many other things that you can do. Uh, but I'm a lazy bastard and this whole the whole point of this video is to make things simple. So we'll just stick to this method for the video. I'm gonna like just decrease the music a little, uh, decrease the sound, and then I'll just bring it back into full volume once the, the hit comes. And that just uh, adds a little bit more punch to it. It's also completely fine to ignore a bunch of the beat hits. Uh, most songs are built up using these like small repetitive sections like a four, eight, and six beats or whatever, and they tend to be punctuated by some sort of pronounced drum beat. And if you try to sync up all of your footage to all of these, you just lose your mind and it, it would just, be way too much work for way too little like gain. So don't be afraid to just ignore the markers at some times. Like it's fine. Nobody will notice. And like it will probably just make your video better. If you just hit every single beat with something, it would probably just become tiring to watch as well. And it would just become annoying because people could just tell like, oh, this guy's trying so hard. Like it's so, he's putting in so much effort and it would just it would just take attention away from whatever's on the screen and onto like the edit that you are doing. And that's not uh, the way I make videos, at least. Some people do, I don't. I recommend using slow motion sparingly. It's really easy to fall into the trap of using slow motion whenever anything cool happens. But if you overuse it, you'll just end up ruining the flow of your video completely. So using slow motion kills the momentum of whatever hap was happening on the screen, right? And it basically just screams, notice this, this is important. And if you use it too much, you lose that impact and it becomes just almost pointless. Slow motion is best used at the end 
of an energetic session, which is leading into a slower session or at the end of a song, since those are the times that you want to slow the momentum of the video anyway, right? So once something like really energetic happens and then like boom, something hits and then it'll just slow down. That's when you want to like insert slow motion. It's really powerful in those situations because you just kill the momentum, things slow down, you breathe, you're good. It's great. If you want to use slow motion in a fast section, but you still want to maintain the momentum, it's really important that you cut away from the clip quickly. You can definitely use it in a fast section still, it's fine, uh, but you need to cut away very quickly. And I don't know what the exact time is, but it's probably less than a second. So if you hit this big shot and then you just want to keep on going because the music is still really fast paced, then you just need to cut really quickly, right? So. It, it almost just acts like a three section part. So there's like before the shot hits, then there's a slow motion part and then there's the cut. If you just cut fast enough, it will appear fast paced, even though the slow motion will slow it down. So just keep that in mind. Step number eight, fill out the jigsaw puzzle. So once you fill out all these important parts where you like just insert all of the, the big sync moments into the movie that will just really like emphasize everything and, and make the music and uh, the video just come together and make it feel like it's all synced up well now it's time to just fill in the rest of the everything right so once you fill out all the important parts just no matter filling out the rest of the space with clips of roughly the right length and again everything i said about the pace earlier applies here so if a clip is slightly too long you, you can add fa you can add some fast forwarding to the clip uh, and this is also a step where recording a few too many mediocre facts can really help you fill out things properly it, it really comes in handy so always record a bit too much always record a bit uh, whenever you record a clip record a bit too much in the, the front end and a bit too much in the in the back end just so you have like that flexibility of being able to just like cut a clip too early and too late so if you just need like a bit more extra dead space at the end of the clip, you have that. And if you need like just a bit more build up to some sort of uh, shot being hit, you have that as well. So just keep that in mind while you record as well. But uh, really this step is all about just filling it out. Like you don't need to hit any big beats. You don't need to make anything special happen. Just put in stuff, really. Step nine, add text or whatever. You know, th this is where you, uh, so you, you pretty much fill out the entire thing. So now you just need to make some sort of intro or outro. And I hate this step. It, it's the, it's the last thing I do and I always half ass it. So just be better than me, please. Right. Uh, in this video, I just added like a literal text and then I had <laughs> at the front and, uh, I thank for watching at the end. That, that's all I did. Uh, that is not really the point of this video, but you know. It can be nice. It, it will make lo things look more professional if you add that to your video. But I don't care at all about this step. It's so boring, just uh, fucking snooze, move on. Step 10, finish. Render out a WMV because uh, you're a lazy, good for nothing, dirt brain that doesn't understand technology or how video works and uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor as you assemble an enjoyable montage of flashes and basically no complicated video editing tricks whatsoever. It is beautiful. So, uh, yep, ch check out uh, the final results here. I just rendered out super quickly. As I said, in a WMV, uh, you probably want to um, render it out in an MP4. But uh, yeah, just uh, look at the video, uh, enjoy it. And this is what your video should look somewhat like.
I'll be making a frag video that contains clips from all three major regions, and uh, this was obviously just the ESEA part. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll put more effort into it than this video. I promise. Bye-bye.